Welcome back after a wonderful lunch. And the lunch was an illustration of what I'd like you to help me with now, which is make menus. So this morning we had a look at foods, acid alkaline, and we looked at the acid alkaline balance does help to give an indication of amounts of food and types of food. We looked at the uh, Fantastic Fats lecture, which also showed different fats and uh, looking at it from the molecular structure of the fats, um, what types we need and how they're used by the body. And if you take your minds back to the lecture on the liver, we also looked at the danger of the very high carbohydrate diet. But let me very quickly say, and I'm sure that you've, you, you've seen that, a 17-year-old growing young man can eat a lot more carbohydrates than a diabetic, than, a, um, than someone who's overweight. And I'm, I'm sure you're, you're starting to, to see that. So that's, that's of course where buffet is very nice. People take what, what suits them. So we're going to have a look at some breakfasts. So let's have a look at some breakfasts. But what I'd first of all like to look at is what would be a really good breakfast for, di for a diabetic. So what does a diabetic have to, have to reduce down? Sugar. The sugars, that's right. They have to reduce them right down. It doesn't mean they can't have sugars. It means that they need to to greatly reduce it. So any suggestions on a good way to start a diabetic's breakfast? And there's no right or wrong answers here. Okay, yeah? Lentils. Lentils is a good one. So we might put lentils here. What we aim for is half cooked, half raw. And the reason why we like half cooked, half raw, because raw will deliver what cooked won't, and cooked will deliver what raw won't. But if someone's got an irritated uh, lining of the gut, then, then may, maybe not raw. So you can see how you would adjust your menus according to the person and according to what their problem was. But this person does not have uh, any gut problems. Their problem is diabetes. So what else could go with the lentils? Walnuts. I'm yeah? just wondering what do you mean raw would deliver? When you cook food, you lose some of the tender vitamins. Mm -hmm. And when you cook food, you release things that aren't available in the raw. So vitamin C, of course, is destroyed with cooking. So any ideas on what else this diabetic, he might not be happy if we just give him lentils. Grapefruit. Grapefruit, yeah. Yeah. So grapefruit. Buckwheat, yeah. What I always do with, uh, with guests, because before they go home, I make out a, a, a program for them. And depending on their problem, I'll do what we're doing now. Now, if they, if they screw up their nose at grapefruit and say, I don't like grapefruit, well, we have to do a bit of adjustment there. So what I'll often say, would you prefer to have um, a very savoury breakfast like avocado, tomato, cucumber? And if they go, no, no, I don't want that for breakfast. But some would like it. So I say, what would, what would you like? If I can't, if I make suggestions and I don't get any, any pluses, so I say, well, what would you like? And they might say, well, I would like to start with some fruit. So what's another fruit a diabetic could have? Granny Smith apple. Granny Smith apple, yeah. Yeah. Or we could just say the green apple. Yeah, it, it, it could be that. Cherries oh. is also. A pardon? Cherries. 
Cherries, yeah, yeah. Cherries, they're, they're nice, low glycemic. We'll say an or, or an or. Okay. Berries yeah. in general. Berries. That's right, right. Yep, we'll just say berries. He might live here and on his morning walk he might pick um, blueberries. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. We've got our fibre, yeah? Everything has fibre. We've got protein, we've got some protein in the buckwheat, we've got some protein in the legumes, the lentils, fats. Avocado. Yeah. Yeah. Avocado could come up with the rule. And of course, avocado would depend on where the person lives because sometimes the avocado is just too expensive or not grown there. Nuts, yeah. <coughs> Nuts will certainly lift it up. So that's a great breakfast for a, a diabetic. Should they have flax seeds? Yes, they could have some, some seeds. That's true. What about rice? Well, if we did rice, it'd be an or, yeah? Mm -hmm. Buckwheat or rice. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is true. Or another, what's another grain? Millet. Yep, yep. Or millet. Or perhaps also corn. quinoa. Or quinoa, yeah. Sorghum. Quinoa. The sorghum is not usually eaten like a, a grain, you know, that's, and that's true. Ethiopia, yeah. It is in Ethiopia, isn't it? <laughs> if they're diabetics in Ethiopia. That is true. <laughs> uh, okay, Here, here's, a, here's another one. Or you might make, let's say, berries. And then make a porridge, because maybe they don't like lentils for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And the porridge could be made out of any of these. So what would they put on the porridge? Berries. Mm -hmm. They could put the berries on, that's true. Anything else? Avocado. Let's keep this to a sweet breakfast, yeah? Mm. Yeah? How about making the porridge from a combination of flax seed and chia seeds, ground, gra grounded? Okay, okay, but we don't want to heat it because remember what the heat does to the double bonds? But you don't have to heat uh, flax seed and uh, chia seeds. Yeah, that, that could, yeah that, that is true, that is true. Can we mix some uh, dates or flour? Oh, oh, can no. we? No, no, no. 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 The price Diabetic. Has but the rice has also sugar. Oh yeah, but not near as much as dates. <laughs> no, 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 not near as much. So may I suggest a sweetener that is at very low glycemic and could make that taste very nice is stewed apple. Mm. Stewed granny, yeah? Mm -hmm. So stewed granny smith apple. Anything else on the porridge, yeah? Can we also use stevia? Uh, a little, yeah. Stevia. Stevia is a sweetening that, that's low GI. Yeah? Would it be possible with a bit of fennel mm. to make it a bit sweeter? Fennel? Yeah, I'm thinking on two tops. Okay. Perhaps. But I'm also thinking of the average person living in the city. Now. What what do you like on your porridge? What what else do you think we could put on that porridge? Yeah. Uh, Soy milk. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that what people like on their porridge? Yeah. Yeah. So they could be a milk. Yeah. yeah. So they could have soy milk. Vanilla. Pardon? Vanilla. 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 Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's often in the soy milk or any other milks. Almond. Almond, yeah. Any other? Coconut. Coconut? Rice. Rice. Yeah. Meal. Coconut. 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 Yeah, yeah. And 
What we often do, and this makes it very nice, so we've got a bowl of porridge, we've got some stewed Granny Smith on top of that, we've got berries all over that, the milk goes on top, and on top of that sprinkle cinnamon. ground flax. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not grabbing that cinnamon, am I? <laughs> There's a question mark about cinnamon. I think half a teaspoon of cinnamon in a dish of um, rice cooked in uh, cashew milk, perfectly fine, but actually one person having half a teaspoon of cinnamon, too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too much, you see that? So ground seeds, yep. Mm -hmm. Now I find that people that are not real happy with lentils for breakfast, maybe not a buckwheat fan, the porridge could be made out of one of these. They're very happy with that. And can you see how that won't get their blood sugar spiked, yes? Corn, rice? Corn. One of the problems, corn uh, polenta porridge, one of the problems is, and this is particularly a problem if someone has a yeast uh, presence in their body, is as the corn dries, the, the, the um, silk, you know, the silk around the corn, if it's drying on the plant, you'll see it goes black. What's the black? <laughs> it's mould. And Dr. Robert Young in his book, he, he says that dried polenta is often tainted with some mould. So we sort of keep away a bit from the maize, the, the dried corn, especially if they've got a yeast problem. So, um, and also, pretend you're a diabetic. Is there a breakfast there you would be happy with? Yeah? Yeah. yeah? Is it the same with corn kernels for popcorn, if they're organic? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a question mark. It's just that if someone has a yeast problem, they're just best keeping away from the dried corn. This is not fresh corn, because fresh corn has been picked, the silks, fresh silks off, and it's, it's uh, cooked. Whereas the dried corn, most dried corn you buy is dried with the with the uh, covering on it. And if you have a look in a field where they've left the corn on to dry, you'll see, see every silk is connected to a kernel of corn. What about the sweet potato with the ginger? Will that be good? Well, that, where, where will that fit? Okay, we could, it that might, Chinese. it might fit in with this. The other thing you're looking at, most people don't want to spend much time in the kitchen in the morning. Yeah. Isn't that true? And so uh, what we'd suggest is the porridges could be cooked um, overnight or if I'm the lady of the house, I'm up at five. So I'll often put something on a low heat as soon as I wake up but not many people wake up as early as I do. When my grandsons come to stay, I always cook a porridge. They love a porridge. Michael and I never have a porridge, but they love porridge, so I make it for them. Yes? I have, um, wait, I have cinnamon, but not from the bark, but from the flower of the tree. Uh -huh. Is that the same? Because it's also tasting something different, but it's also yeah. the same tree. Do you know, that's something I cannot tell you. I do not know that, but... In many dishes that require cinnamon, I'll often put uh, coriander powder in, and that or cardamom. Mm -hmm. Cardamom's very nice. Yep. Let me suggest another breakfast. Let's say avocado. Av o. Av o cardo. Tomato. So there's some raw, uh, some spinach, and sourdough spelt, toast, and uh, a legume. Might be lentils, might be black-eyed beans, might be scrambled tofu, some sort of legume. I have found that 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 breakfast sits very well too. And that's something that's quick. They don't have to cook the things. The legumes could be cooked the night before. 
So the spinach is raw? No, it's cooked. Though. Usually cooked, yeah, or just wilted. Yeah. So this is what you do with your guests. You, this is what I always do. I just say, would you have that for breakfast? No. Would you have that? Would you? Ha and you, 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 um, you're working with them because there's no use making a program that they're not going to do. Yes. Uh, if you, uh, if you have something sweet, can you balance that out with with lemon or something? Well, we, well, with the with the diabetic, we want to bring the sweet right down. Okay. So whether you put lemon with the sweet or not, it's still going to okay. affect the blood sugar levels. Yeah. Could we have the same <clears throat> for a yeast infection that we have for a diabetic? Do they need the same? Uh, the it, it certainly could be similar. Okay. Certainly could be similar. What about the? Uh, uh, English standard breakfast, uh, and, uh, apart from the bacon, of course, and, but uh, the beans and the tomato sauce. And, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, potatoes. yeah. So that could be the legumes there. Yeah. Um, that that and yeah. Then. In Australia. Well, that yes, they they could have some vegetables. I'm just working with most people that don't want to cook in the morning. They want something quick and quick and easy. That that's true, yeah. What the, what do you mean by SD spelled toast? Sourdough. Yeah. What? The sourdough. Oh, sourdough. Sourdough yeah. spelt toast. Yeah. Yeah. And buckwheat granola. I think people, a lot of people like granola. That's true. So we could go over to the more sweet one. Is buckwheat granola? And um, many many people do a granola that has um, that has some sweetening in it. So um, I don't know if if you put did you put uh, yeah syrup. yeah see maple syrup was in this morning's granola, but you can make it without. And the one we make at Misty Mountain, we soak the buckwheat for a couple of hours, then rinse it very well, then dehydrate it in the dehydrator for 24 hours. And then when it's made up, um, the staff put uh, coconut. And you know, coconut's slightly sweet. But if you've got a granola that's got no sweetening at all, you can do the berries and the stewed uh, Granny Smith apples. Apples. Yeah. Oat. Is that okay for? Oat. Ah, uh, yeah. We. Um, that's a possibility. That that could be the porridge. The porridge uh, there. Uh, yeah. If people like oats, I say make sure they're well cooked. Mm -hmm. Ideally in a in a, a slow cooker overnight, and just don't do them every day. Mm -hmm. And Barbara, this is a, a Western breakfast. Mm -hmm. If it is for Asia. That will not fit at all. So we find something that does. What would an Asian like? So much uh, cooked rice, for example. Mm. I yeah. don't know what will be the combination. Yeah. See, the white it's rice gets uh, the idea. white the white rice gets the blood sugar level up high, yeah. but your basmati and your brown rice are low. Mm. Mm -hmm. And rice must have one hour at least. To break the starch granules down. So if you're cooking it in a rice cooker, it'll usually turn off after what 20 minutes, half an hour, yeah. and then what you do is you just leave it, and you do not touch it for another half hour, and in that hot environment, it continues to cook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that full corn basmati? Pardon? Is that the whole corn mm -hmm. basmati of rice? It's here often white rice. Okay, so it can be white, can we white basmati? Okay. But you can get whole grain basmati. Oh, okay. But you're talking about the whole grain basmati? Either. So they both low in... Yes. What's the reason for that? Compared to jasmine rice or something? What's the reason for that? To explain it, I, I need to go to the potato and the sweet potato. So then the question is, why is the sweet potato low and the white potato high? 
The only way it can be determined is under a microscope. So under a microscope, the white potato has a loose fibre structure which quickly releases the glucose, but the sweet potato has a very tight structure. That's the, and, the, and the tight structure slowly releases the glucose. So one would question why is a sweet cherry have the glycemic low and the banana high? Same thing. It has a lot to do with the starch structure. So because the uh, basmati is a slow releaser, all I can come to the conclusion with is it's a, a tight structure. And of course with brown rice, because of the fibre, we know that that slows the release down, whereas just your usual white rice, that's a, a quick releaser. So I guess with an Asian, it would be stir-fried vegetables and rice. Would that be right? Um, I could think of a sweet potato with ginger. It would go. But, that's, but that by itself is not enough, no. is it? No. And so I guess tofu in a stir fry. Um, yeah, so but then again, the porridge, they cook it in a different way. It, so. Cook it in a different way. So you'd have to go for your low glycemic. So when I was in Singapore, the lady I stayed with, she did black beans in the slow cooker overnight. Mm. So every morning we had a bowl of black beans and we had an amazing array of fruit, fruits the like that I'd not had before, and nuts. Now, can you see that there's, you've got a good, a good supply of your fibre and proteins and the fats in the nuts. So e every meal you, you make, that's what, you're, that's what you're looking at. Where's my fibre? Where's the protein? Because if you don't have enough protein, it's difficult to go the distance and your fats. So someone with cancer, what would be the best breakfast for them? A little bit different. We want to get those carbohydrates right down. So with the, uh, with the, with the cancer, we usually advocate six weeks no fruit. Mm -hmm. So what would be their breakfast if there's going to be no fruit? Yeah. Berries. No fruit. No fruit. We want to get the glucose levels down even lower. Mm. Pardon? Also or beans or yeah, what would we do for the raw? Vegetables. There's a group of uh, classified as fruit, but almost not classified as fruit because they're the savoury fruits. So we've got tomato, cucumber, avocado, pumpkin, uh, zucchini, uh, eggplant. Yep. So what would be the raw? Avocado? Cucumber? Celery. Celery, yeah. Again, we've got to make it so that they like it. <laughs> <laughs> and they can have a little grain, but not a lot of grain. So maybe just half a cup of some of the grains we just looked at. Yeah. Maybe rice. You've gone quiet. Yeah, I, I like some color to that. It's green, green. So will we put buckwheat? Yeah. And or rice? And we can have some green. What would be some green? Broccoli? Yeah, or you could have some steamed vegetables maybe. Steamed veg, we'll just say steamed veg. 
again, it depends on the lady of the house <laughs> that's doing the cooking. Okay, we've got our fibre. Got a little bit of protein in here, not a lot. Protein? Yeah, we'll do some we'll do some legumes, yeah. <coughs> now this is what I advocate or suggest that when someone is on the no fruit for six weeks, variety is very important. So they don't get sick of it. <laughs> So I suggest Monday lentils, Tuesday cannelloni bean, Wednesday black-eyed bean day, Thursday chickpea day. Can you see the variety there? Mm -hmm. Friday tofu. Yeah? What about carrots? Maybe eat carrots because they are a bit sweet. Uh, as long as they're not eating a whole plate of carrots. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the rice is still okay when you want to bring down the carbohydrates? As long as it's not much. You wouldn't have two cups of rice, you wouldn't even have a cup of rice. Mm -hmm. So what would you fill up with on the steamed vegetables, on the legumes? So not much, yeah? Do you have any ideas? I mean, you're in a, in a health centre and you can cook for the people, but if we just suggest them how they do it, then this seems very complicated for them, I guess, if you just tell them like this. That's, that's why we don't just tell them. And that's why we say, would you do this? Would you do that? No, no, no. What about this? What about that? That's what we always do. And as I said before, if you don't get a nod, if anything you've suggested, you say, well, what would you like to do? What could you do? And, and, and that, that's what you do. That's, that's why that other breakfast, which was um, avocado, tomato, cucumber, sourdough, spelt toast and, and uh, lentils on top, or you, you, in Australia you can buy baked beans. Everyone has baked beans. That's right, but you can get organic baked beans that have no sugar in them. So you, you're looking at what, what they can do and... You know, if they have a wife who likes cooking, so there's all of that that you that you have to play with. Um, we have when we when we have had a, a cancer patient here, she has taken granite, granite, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that pomegranate, pomegranate, pomegranate mm -hmm. for the breast cancer because that helps only with hormone balance, hormone imbalance cancers. So is that also something? The, the pomegranate, because of the sweetness of it, you'd probably introduce that after six weeks. Okay. So for six weeks, um, no, no sugar in that. That can actually flip the way the cancer cells run. Dr. Holland said when you deprive cancer cells of glucose, they self-destruct. That's what, we're, that's what we, we want. It's just for six weeks. Then slowly introduce. Yeah, yeah, very, very low, low sweet. The pomegranate could come in then because that's not really high sweet. So lunch. Let's have a look at a diabetic's lunch. What are we going to start with? Salad. Salad. And the salad is what they like. You know, some people like grated carrot, finely chopped celery and lettuce. Some people like um, a, a salad made out of um, cabbage, finely sliced cabbage. So it's what they can, what they have in the garden. There's a whole range of things you can do. There's also the tabbouleh salad. Are you familiar with tabbouleh, which is the parsley salad? It's usually made with cracked wheat, but we make it with quinoa. So, salad. Might be grated beetroot, it might be just tomato, 
cucumber, avocado and lettuce. So, and that's the beauty of the health retreat. We usually do a slightly different salad every day to show them different things you can do. Because most people don't eat enough raw. Our our chefs are not allowed to serve tossed salad every day. <laughs> we want some variety in the, in the salads. Can they, can they take carrots? Yep. yep. So salad. Radish? Radish, yeah. Radish is great. That could be part of the salad. If the salads are exciting and tasting, they're more likely to eat them. Now, my husband does not like garlic. He does not like anything hot. And when he has salad, he doesn't want any dressing on it. But we have a lot of uh, very delicious dressing, so we put them in the jug and, you know, the people can choose what they like. Could put seeds on top, yeah, yeah. Pumpkin seeds are good, especially if the man has a prostate problem because the pumpkin seeds are very high in zinc. Yeah? Do they damage at all if you roast them? Yeah, they are a little. Sometimes we'll roast them just for a certain flavour, but remember your uh, double bonds, they do get destroyed with the roasting. Yeah. The sunflower sauce. Mm. Yeah? We still like this one because it's still oh, good. Sunflower sauce. Yeah, as a, it's a yeah. sauce. We, are, we do a sunflower dressing that's su sunflowers with water and lemon, mm. garlic and salt, and you blend that a lot and it comes out white. <laughs> you don't think the sunflower seeds would come out white, but they do. Yeah. I read that uh, some nuts are easy, uh, more easily digestible if you roast them. Okay, I wonder why. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe because they taste good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gives a nice flavour. And sometimes we'll roast for a certain flavour in a dish. We do a satay. Are you familiar with satay? Um, sauce, which is usually roasted peanuts, but we use roasted almonds. So we do that just for a flavour in a sauce we will do. Remember, it's not the odd day you might roast your nuts or the odd day you don't. It's what you do every day. That's... What about the Thousand Islands dressing? That would be nice. That's well, what is Thousand Island dressing? I think is it um, <laughs> with the tomato puree. Yeah. Yeah. So that's easy to make. Yeah, and of course tomatoes, your low sugar fruits. So mayonnaise, tomato? And, and sometimes you can just do olive oil, lemon and crushed garlic and salt. That's delicious. Tahini. Yeah, tahini in there makes it a little bit creamy. That makes it very nice. We do quite a few tahini dressings. Okay, a bit more for our diabetic here for lunch. Steam veg? Yep, steam vegetables. No limit on the vegetables. They could be stir fried, stir fried one day, steamed another day. So they could be stir fried or steamed or baked. Remember, we're looking at a little bit of variety. Yeah? Or a dal. A dal, yeah. Well, that's. We will definitely add the protein. So the protein could be, uh, again, something with legumes. And that could be a dal, that could be a, a chickpea dish, it could be a whole variety of things. What some people will do when they're on um, um, a meal, a food program like this where they're trying to get those sugars down, They'll make, say, a dal for lunch, and then they can have that the next morning at breakfast a, a little bit. And they'll have it on toast for breakfast with avocado and tomato. And for lunch, they'll have it with vegetables and salad.
And that's also, that, that lunch could do anyone, couldn't it? In fact, the lunch we had today, we had steamed potatoes, we had a, leg, a lentil dish, we had lots of salad, cauliflower. Anybody could eat that lunch. Isn't that true? So what I find is usually the most challenging is the, is the breakfast. <laughs> and that's why I have to talk to people. Do you know what? Some people, some people doesn't want any of that. They said, I haven't got time for that in the morning. So what would be a very quick breakfast, a very common breakfast today? It's not a breakfast that I actually desire, but a lot of people are happy with it. Smoothies. smoothies. So what can we put in the smoothie? Well, I think we'll go with the diabetic because we're looking at low, low sugars. So we start off with one cup of fluid. What could that one cup of fluid be? Yes? Water. It could be water, but that'll be a bit boring. Let's make it a bit more interesting. <laughs> Soy milk, yeah. Any other? Or? Almond, could be almond milk. Now what makes a very nice basis is the coconut water. Because mm. that's slightly sweet. I have yeah. to experience it really depends which coconut water you get. Mm -hmm. They're not all the same. Okay, so you look for a good one. Coconut water. I, I don't really buy it or use it, but I know people that do have told me the same thing. So you try different ones. And you might even contact each other and say, this is a good one. What else are we going to put in our smoothie? Berries. Yeah, yeah berries. Do you know what can make it creamy too and doesn't, um, doesn't really change the taste too much is avocado. And when we put the avocado in, we're putting a few more minerals in. We're putting uh, a very nice fat in. Some nuts. Yeah. Okay, yeah, some nuts, seeds. What makes it very nice is the uh, chia. Mm. The chia gives it a bit of thickness. Mm. Or the ground flax, yeah. Seeds. Now, if it's for breakfast, we need to up the protein a bit. So what we suggest is a protein powder. And you can get uh, pea, you can get hemp, you can get brown rice, organic soy. So have a look. And you want a protein powder that does not have any sweetening in it. Now, if a person wants a smoothie at night, there's really no need to put the protein powder in at night because you want it lighter. But in the morning, this is taking the pace, place of breakfast. So our fibre will be in the berries, avocado, nuts and seeds. The, uh, the protein, well, that's where we do the protein powder. There is a little bit in the nuts and seeds. And the soy Yep, there's a little bit there. And the fats, you've got some good fats in your, there's a little bit in the almond and the coconut water, there's a little bit in the nuts and seeds. Avocado. And the avocado, that's true. What some people will do is they might put maybe one dessert spoon. Do you have a dessert spoon? That's what you eat your dessert with, yep. So maybe one dessert spoon of coconut cream. That makes it really nice and creamy. Or some people will just put um, a dessert spoon of coconut oil in and they find that's a really nice way to get the coconut oil in because it's masked by the everything else for those that don't like the flavour. I don't know, have carob also a high... Yeah. Now, carob's great because carob is a, called a complex carbohydrate, meaning it's not a carbohydrate that gets the sugars up. So carob powder can make it nice. 
and that puts a bit of protein in it. Now how the person will know that this is enough is it will take them the distance, meaning they don't get hungry and they don't need to eat anything until lunchtime. So for some people, you'll get a real tick with that because it's just blender, throw things in, buzz, drink. How much do you use of the protein powder? It's usually about a dessert spoon, I guess you'd... Only? You'd, yeah, it's not, not a lot. Because it's quite concentrated, usually. So that can work. Works well for the bachelor. What about a packed lunch if they're going to work? How do we do that? Lunch. What could be a packed lunch? Because we want to have the main meal at lunchtime. Salad? Yep. Dal. Dal, yep. So we'll, let's have a look at some legume options. So some legume options could be hummus, yeah? Could be a uh, lentil burger, yeah? So we're looking at something that's, that can be done at lunchtime. Now the dressings, we've just been talking about dressings and we talked about a lemon oil, put a bit of tahini in it makes it creamy so you've got a crushed garlic you've got a nice creamy dressing there if it's too thick you just put a bit of water in makes a delicious dressing so an easy quick lunch is the dressing which you made on a Sunday afternoon or the day before and a tin of cannelloni beans say or a packet of cannelloni cooked beans rinse it well and put those two together Got that? That's very nice. So and that's very, very simple. It's just beans with a nice creamy, savoury sauce. Mm. So I'll just say, say white bean and dressing. And something else is marinated tofu. And the longer that sits in its marinade, the nicer it gets. Tofu is a tasteless sponge. It's got to do something to it. So what would you make the marinade out of? Lemon, oil, maybe crushed garlic, maybe a little grated ginger, salt, maybe a little miso in that. Sitting in that makes it very nice. I ate something very nice at one time. It is from a man who grew up in Egypt. It was a can of red beans and a little can of concentrated tomato puree, but I don't know if you would like to use it, with some, uh, he was uh, sautéing some onions and a bit of garlic and put all together. And this mm. he put on a piece of bread. Then. Is it good to have uh, gluten-free bread? If you can get a nice one. It's a bit hard to find a nice one. Yeah. A lot of gluten-free breads aren't very nice. Yeah. So sometimes you're better to use rye crackers, okay. something like that. Yeah. And that's certainly something that they might put in crackers. Again, you've got to read your labels, make sure there's no sugar in there. 
I found something and I travel with them all the time. They're called Fin Crisps. Yeah. And they're a rye cracker. Yeah. And I travel with them, so if there's not much, I can have Fin Crisps with avocado. That's <laughs> so this is packed lunch, yeah. <clears throat> there's something else that, uh, that's an easy additive and that's olives, yeah. Something else that can be added to a ca uh, packed lunch is some um, baked sweet potato or pumpkin from yesterday. <laughs> so when the meal's being made, do, do a bit of extra sweet, baked sweet potato, baked pumpkin, and they're nice cold. So we want a lunch that's nourishing. So where are we with our fibre? Everything's got fibre. Where are we with our protein? There's a nice selection of proteins there. Our fats, uh, most of these have a bit, you know, your, your marinades have a bit of oil, the dressing has a bit of oil. The hummus has tahini and maybe a little olive oil in it. Got some oil in your olives. And a nice dessert is some nuts. Because a lot of people, especially meat eaters, they have no idea what to have for a picnic. So it's good for you to play around with those yourself. And you might even come up with something more exciting. So if they have that for lunch, maybe that's not as substantial as they would usually have if they were at home. And maybe if it was a bit earlier, maybe their lunchtime is 12 o'clock, well, they're going to be hungry at night. So what can they have at night? Yeah? The smoothie without protein. Yeah, could be the smoothie without protein. Much, much less complicated. Um, soup. Soup, yeah. yeah. And a soup, big pot of soup can be made on a Sunday afternoon. And maybe you'll need, leave, leave enough for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and freeze the rest. Soup is something easy that can just, or it can be made of an evening for the next day. So freeze in, in a portion sizes, then before the person goes to work, they take it out of the freezer, put it in the fridge, so when they get home, all they have to do is warm it. And the other is, you know, whatever works. They might find that they don't need anything at night, maybe that's substantial, especially if they had lunch at one or two o'clock. That will usually take them the distance. But let's say it's a diabetic and it's seven o'clock at night and they're hungry and they haven't got any ingredients for a smoothie. What would be good light evening meal? Almond milk or something like this. Pardon? Almond milk. Maybe a, maybe a glass of the almond milk or an avocado. Or a couple, you know, a few fin crisps with avocado and... Uh, and tomato one, or maybe there might be a little hummus in the fridge. Just something very light. If it's, if it's only a small amount is eaten at night, it digests quickly. A large meal takes a while to digest. A small meal, of course, a lot quicker. I'm, I'm going to more the unusual ones because when you've got someone that hasn't got a major health problem, it's a lot easier. <laughs> but these are the more difficult ones. That would be great for your person with cancer. That would be great for your diabetic. Would be great for the person that wants to lose weight. Would be great for the person that's got a yeast presence. And remember a sign that a person has a yeast presence is their tongue. Have you looked at your tongue in the mirror yet? It should be pink from the tip to the back. <coughs> If it's got a white coat and you can scrape it off, that's usually just, you know, waste coming out of the tongue. But if you can't scrape it off, they're little fungus buds. So the tongue is quite a good guide. But yeast presence usually manifests itself, uh, can be manifest itself in um, sinus problems, uh, rashes, 
tinea, which is like itchy between the toes. Also in the private parts, in Australia they call it thrush. So with a woman, with a man, they call it jock itch. So, you know, around that area. So anyone that has any of those symptoms, they're, they're best to go on an antifungal diet, which is very, very low sweet. And also at the same time taking some herbs. Some herbs that will kill off the fungus. Remember you alternate them every two weeks. Might be garlic. Might be oregano essential oil that you start very slowly with. So my aim was to give you an idea of the the sort of things that a person could eat for these different problems, yeah? What about a keto uh, menu? Okay, right here, let's do a keto. Keto breakfast. And why would someone be on a ketogenic diet? Uh, neurological problems. Neurological. Uh, remember the the uh, the especially the coconut oil is broken down to ketones, which are neurohealers, neuroprotectors. So let's have a look at a a, a keto diet. Fibre's important, S some raw. Cheesecake and coconut oil. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to have cheesecake on the ketogenic diet for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> the healthy one, of course. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do it then? So the keto, the keto, remember the carbs are right down, so we want some savoury fruits. Brings us back to tomato, yeah. Cucumber. Avocado, yeah. Good serving of uh, uh, olive oil, perhaps, to go with that? Yep, yep. Could be, a, you know, for one person, maybe half a teaspoon sprinkled over. Mm. Half a teaspoon? Mm-hmm. That's not a lot. No, it's not. If they can handle that, they could have more, but most people can't handle a lot because it's very concentrated. But what's the fat that we want the ketogenic pea, yeah, the coconut? coconut. So we had a young man who had a, um, a brain tumour, so we wanted him to have the coconut oil, and he could not handle it. Some people can eat it off the spoon and love it, but he could not. So we made him a chocolate, and he could have a couple of squares of this after every meal. So what we do with the chocolate, it was coconut oil, carrot powder, and to make it creamy, we put tahini in. So it was basically that, and you can see that the carob powder is slightly sweet, the coconut oil is slightly sweet, you could even put some coconut in that. Some shredded coconut and even some ground nuts. Especially cashews, because cashews are a nut that have a slightly sweetness about them. So our chef did all that and he was very happy. After every meal he could have Two, two squares of his chocolate. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if it's uh, brain issues, they could have fruit then, couldn't they? No, no, because it's, it's cancer, so we want it right down. Yeah? I guess a dog would be nice for, for a keto as well. Very nice, very nice, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I have a uh, for considering the chocolate. Yeah. I made it, but I had some dates with it. I mean, not for the keto, I understand that, but it did not mix together. Yeah. If So you melted the coconut oil? You really need to... The, the dates and that did not no. mix together? No. 
what you need to do, if you're putting something lumpy in like that, you need to, you need to melt this and really beat this, these three together. Beat them together very well. Sometimes a little blender or a bay mix to just get the mix really good, yeah? Often they say put in le lecithin, but I don't know what... Mm. Lecithin's or... like a... F it, you can try it. And the other is play with it a bit. Maybe a little tiny bit of soy milk might, might get it around a bit better. How much tahini did you put in? Huh. I haven't made it myself. The, the cooks make it. <laughs> But I think you're looking at maybe if you do a cup of coconut, you'd probably do a teaspoon of carob powder and you're looking at maybe a teaspoon of tahini. You know, you'd play with it a little bit. But that worked very well. Anything else can the keto have for breakfast? I think they need a bit more, do you? Yeah, some nuts. He's six foot, this young man, and he's 20. We've got to give him a bit more. <laughs> no, no grains. No grains on the keto. Yeah. Back to the cold chia and flaxseed forage. Yeah, yep, yep, you could do a... Uh, and the other what you could do is you could make even a dressing out of that. Well, let's, what about some um, baked sweet potato? That'd help. Want to fill them up? <laughs> We're keeping away from the grains on the ketogenic diet. Yeah, we'll keep away from the, the grain. Uh, and of course after that they can have a couple of spoonfuls of coconut oil or a couple of um, pieces of chocolate. Now what can also be nice is a little bit of peppermint oil in that. A couple of drops in that, that can make it quite nice. Could you explain what keto is? Ketogenic? Yeah. The ketogenic diet is a diet that is high fibre, generous protein and quite generous fats. And it's designed to uh, stimulate the liver to convert the fats to okay. ketones. Okay. So the lunch we had today, the ketogenic diet, would we make any adjustments con considering lunch today for the ketogenic diet? I have a question for the breakfast. Are there any fruits allowed? Not, not on the ketogenic. No, 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 no. Not, not, great, not even berries. Not initially. You're really trying to get that sweet right down. Take away the potatoes. That's right. Yep. Yeah. So the lunch today would be a great ketogenic diet. You took the potatoes away and they had a few pieces of chocolate for dessert. If, yeah. if we uh, uh, cool the potatoes, can we eat them then? Because the, the, the starch changes when we cool it. We want, we want all starch out for the ketogenic. But for the cancer patient, that lunch today would have been perfect. They just don't have six pieces of potato. They might just have two. Because um, Professor Constantini, he found that just under the skin of the potato, there are antifungal properties. So you balance it out with the GI and, the, and that. Why would we put someone on a ketogenic diet? Lose weight. Yes, they can lose weight. But specifically, what's the ketogenic diet for? Healing the nerve cells, yeah. Healing, so the, the uh, epileptic. Um, would it also help with uh, nervous disorders, others? 
Ah, uh, yeah, but not. Um, again, when you've got someone who's very anxious, yeah. you know, they can be, a, you know, you've got to get food that they're happy with. Yeah. Because if you take too much away, they, a lot of people use the food for, you know, comfort a bit. And what was the reason why you're more strict with the grains with them rather than, and not with so much with the diabetic than the other? Because with a ketogenic diet, you want to kick in the, you know, the ketones being made, so you want to get the carbs right, right down. And well, how does that happen? Like, why would that, why would the low carbs make more ketones? Well, it only makes more ketones if you're having the fats as well. But you had sweet potato here. That's Thanks. right. The beauty of the sweet potato, it's a very, it's low glycemic index, so there's a low delivery of, uh, of the glucose. How long does this take? How long must, would I have to do that? Six weeks? It just, de hours? on the ketogenic diet? Yes. It just depends on the problem. So it, it, uh, it might be for six months. To control seizures, so this is this is quite serious, because you know, seizures are quite serious. Yeah, I'm quite sure that there are some recipe books or cooking books about the ketogenic diet. Perhaps there there are some hints to replace those things which are not good instead of the other things, and then it's easy to translate. Well, your your ketogenic diet cookbooks will be nearly all meat. And so what's important to explore is the many different ways to do your legumes. And I think I mentioned that my first cookbook was an Indian vegetarian cookbook. They know how to do legumes. So many different ways, so many different flavours. Yes? There is a cookbook that name is The Alternative Keto Vegan Cookbook Recipes. Okay. So okay, yeah, yeah. Some out there. Yeah, but still, when you're used to the carbos and you don't get it, I would starve when I eat this. You you would beginning. you would be surprised how you don't, and it's because <laughs> it's because of the the legumes fill you. Then I have to eat much. Then I get filled up, right? Well, it depends. If it's going to be on the ketogenic diet, you fill up with the legumes and vegetables. There is no limit to the amount. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, yeah, it, it, yeah. The only time I've seen, so we had a, a cancer patient who was on the, you know, low carbs, and um, they were, so they said, but I'm losing too much weight. So I investigated what they were eating, and they just were not eating enough legumes, and they were hungry all the time. See, the three things that satisfy your hunger are fiber, protein, and fat. And there are carbohydrates in the legumes, not near as much as in the grain. There are carbohydrates in the nuts, but not very much. So that's what you're looking at. If you're hungry three hours after the meal, you come to the conclusion, well, I've got to put a bit more in. I've got to, I've got to do something else here. And at Misty Mountain Health Retreat, when our guests break their fast, we serve crackers. And the crackers we serve are not made out of grain. So, you know, the paleo really gets the grain out. So you can buy paleo crackers, paleo mueslis. You can do a lot of paleo things, but they're all made out of ground nuts and seeds. So the, so the crackers that the staff make, I think it's uh, grated carrot, I think that that sort of the main thing that goes in there and then ground seeds and nuts I think that's what they do and they spread it out onto sheets and uh, dehydrate it for 24 hours and then they crack crack them open there's your there's your crackers so it can be hummus and avocado on crackers as well as a dal a olives olives artichokes nuts seeds all of that helps. Olives can be added to every meal. So olives are a savoury fruit. 
he said it's against the as for healing the nerve cells, which kind of sicknesses are these all sorry. Heal or healing the nerve cells. Yes. Well, this morning we talked about the ketogenic diet yes. and we looked at how the liver converts this extra fat to ketones mm -hmm. and ketones are neurohealers, neuroprotectors. So it's also against all the mental sicknesses? I, it's mainly neurological damage. Mm -hmm. So where the nerve cells have been damaged. So with mental illnesses, they're not necessarily being damaged. It could be, uh, you know, say something like schizophrenia. Well, like schizophrenia is damaged because the majority of people I've found with schizophrenia, um, it's from substance abuse. So there's definitely been damage there. So the, the ketogenic diet could help them. Yes? Diabetic feet, is it not enough damage? Diabetic feet. Yeah. Um, yeah, it could help that. So with diabetic feet, you do the uh, uh, cane pepper compresses on the bottom of the feet to get the blood down there because the blood feeds the nerves. You can also massage the area with um, St. John's wort oil. Because do you remember what St. John's, what, what its number one property is? It's a nerve nourisher. Nerve nourisher. Because you can't put someone with nerve damage, you can't put their feet in hot water. What about some onions for uh, cancer, uh, lunch and uh, diabetic? Uh, Fantastic. Onions are very low, low sweet. Yeah. And herbs, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, food should taste fantastic. There's no doubt about that. What we find with most people, the food tastes fantastic, but it's killing them. Mm. Or the food's really good for them and it's got no flavour. Mm -hmm. It must have flavour. Mm. And what puts flavour in is good quality salt, good quality oils, fresh herbs. Yes. Do you do any particular diet for those who have hormonal imbalances? Oh, not, not necessarily. Is um the hormonal, but I do find a lot of people with hormonal imbalances, not all, but a lot, are carrying too much weight, so they do well to get the carbohydrates down. Remembering that these three foods are the ones that give you the feeling of satiation or satisfaction. And that's another thing with the fat-free diet, people are wanting to eat all day long because they never get that feeling of satiation or satisfaction. And that's what the fats give and the proteins give. So if someone comes to us with weight loss, of course these programs would do very well with that. This is a common email we get is 10 kilos lost in six weeks. And they say it's like we're not even on a diet, we're not hungry. <laughs> because they're the three f food groups that keep the food in the stomach longer. Yes? But the portioning of the food is key also. How now they lose? The portion, they're the portion, but what you'll find is because these give the full feeling, mm -hmm. um, you don't really need to eat as much and you can have a whole plate of salad, <laughs> no limit on the salad, have a whole avocado per meal. Mm. An avocado is a nice little bundle of protein, fiber, and fats. It's a fruit, you could have two avocados per meal. You'd probably want to live in Queensland to do that, where the avocados grow. Could you revive dead nerve cells? Could you revive dead nerve cells? Revive the nerve cells. Sometimes you can. I have seen nerve cells revive in the feet with the cane compressors where the people had lost all feeling in their feet. So we're coming to a time where you're starting to see where you, you can draw from different 
of the lectures we've looked at for certain, certain conditions. Broccoli. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Ideally organic, it's one of the most sprayed crops. Mm -hmm. So all your vegetables, no limit on your vegetables. The only time you would limit would be the very high carbohydrate vegetable, which is potato. <clears throat> lemon. You use lemon. We use a lot of lemon. Okay. It's one of your savoury fruits. So we've got a bit of an idea on, on food and diet. Yeah? If we're talking about menus for various people here, could we maybe have a short list of desserts for people who are not suffering from... Okay. <laughs> suffering from health. Yeah, we can have a short list of desserts. I love dessert, <laughs> but I don't have it every day. So apple pie. That's a delicious dessert. What I do is I cook the apples, but only in a little bit of water. So when they're cooked, there's, no, there's not lots of juice put on a very low heat. And when they're cooked, I sprinkle sultanas. I notice that you call them raisins. And then I put the lid on. And the, the heat from the apple just softens, the, softens them. I bake my bottom crust half. Then I put the hot apples in and put the top on and bake it. Delicious apple pie. No sweetening at all in that. What do you have in the crust? I'll give you the crust. It's uh, two cups of flour and I always use the spelt. But half half, huh? It can be two cups of wholemeal or one cup of white and hunt one cup of wholemeal. Half a cup of olive oil and half a cup of water. You take warm or cold water? Oh, usually just tap water. Pinch of salt. And that's a delicious pastry. That pastry can be used for all sorts of things. So another nice dessert could be uh, pumpkin pie. And what we do with the pumpkin pie is um, you, cook, you cook the pumpkin with dates. And as the pumpkin becomes soft, the dates become soft, it's almost like a beautiful caramel flavour. And to make it creamy, we put coconut cream in. Might put a bit of um, coriander. Some people might put cinnamon, I put coriander in. What's also nice is grated lemon rind. And then what you want is something that will give it a, a bit of firmness. So you blend all this up once your pumpkin and dates are cooked. So something to give it a bit of firmness might be um, uh, arrowroot, arrowroot flour or uh, corn flour or white spelt. Just put some white spelt in. That's a delicious pie. Use that for the pastry. Another, and you've got your frozen, frozen cheesecakes. There's, there's if you um, look at frozen vegan cheesecakes, there's lots. You get lots. Another nice one is um, carob balls. Yep, and that's um, with your carob balls for your base you would use some tahini and you might use maple syrup or honey 
and uh, you might do uh, a little coconut cream or coconut oil and then ground ground nuts and uh, carob powder. You might roll that in coconut and freeze them. It's great to have a whole lot of them in the fridge, freezer. And then the children can have one of those when they've eaten all their salad and all their vegetables. <laughs> yes? What is the carob powder? Carob powder. It's carob. It's from the carob bean. Remember when we made our smoothie, we put carob powder in? I remember when we made our chocolate, we put carob powder in. It's almost a bit like a cocoa type flavour, but it's, it's not bitter. It's naturally sweet. Thank you. Chips. No, chili. It's a, it's a liquid yeah. kind of carob. Mm -hmm. Carob syrup. A, is this the same? So it's or Carobs, it? Carob syrup is ground carob. They have to have these big stones and they grind it to a syrup. Yeah, that's, yeah. Also, okay. yeah, that's very nice. That's, sweet, that's, nice. that's very sweet. That's true. Because carob is naturally sweet. Mm. You could also make a chocolate the, like the one we just made, but if, uh, if it's made for people that don't have problems with sweet, then you can put a little maple syrup in it, put some dried fruit and dried nuts in it. So there's quite a bit that you can do. I do an apple strudel too. And how I do the apple strudel, I do the pastry. And then I put it between two cling wraps and then I roll it. Because when you do that, you can get it paper thin. And then I take the top cling wrap off and I pile it with grated apple. And then I sprinkle a bit of maple syrup on it and then I pull the edge of the cling wrap up and it rolls. And then I keep rolling it and I have my pan there and I roll it into my pan so I've got the most magnificent apple strudel. And as it bakes, the, the uh, apple juice comes out and as it cooks, you know, a bit of the oil comes out from the pastry and a bit of maple syrup runs out and you get this magnificent crust. It's very nice. So there's much you can do. The pie, uh, the, the, pie, the strudel, do you do from half half or just right? Oh, either, either. What about muffins? It's very hard to get light, fluffy muffins. <laughs> I don't usually do them. Banana cake. I oh, do a banana cake. I do a banana cake when I've got bananas that. Banana. I do a banana cake when I've got yellow bananas with black dots all over them and no one's going to eat them. And when I, when I do that, I, I do maybe six bananas. I also do things that my husband loves and he loves apple pie, apple strudel and banana cake. So they're basically the three that I make. If we've got a lot of pumpkins, I might do a pumpkin pie especially if the grandchildren are there. So for six bananas, then I do a third of a cup of coconut oil and you melt that. And maybe a, th a third of a cup of olive oil. This sounds like a lot of oil, but 10 people might eat the cake. So, yeah. And then... The sweetening, you might put uh, oh no, one dessert spoon of sweet of sweetener, 
so I might put palm sugar in or I might put maple syrup. That's usually the two I put in. And then with that, oh, maybe, maybe half a cup of uh, white spelt flour and half a cup of wholemeal spelt. And then I'll put some walnuts, fold walnuts through. And uh, sultanas, you call them raisins. Now, if you wanted to do it gluten free, you would do maybe some sorghum, maybe some almond flour, maybe a little bit of rice flour. And you can Google flours that you can make gluten free. And then I put a raising agent in. I find that if you don't put a raising agent in, it's very heavy. So the raging agent I often use is baking powder. I might make a banana cake once a month. So we don't need it very much. And that makes a delicious cake. So when my children had a birthday, I would usually do a waffle cake. So let's make a recipe for waffles. And you need a, you definitely need a waffle line for this. And if you make this recipe uh, into a pancake, it's not very nice. Because with the waffle cake, you've got two hot surfaces touching the batter, and that's what causes it to rise. So our waffle, the waffles we make are one cup of soaked chickpeas. One cup of millet, this is raw millet, raw millet, and it's hulled, raw hulled millet. And two and a half cups of water. And a little salt. And you blend that very well. What we do is we blend it the night before and then in the morning when we're making the waffles we blend it again because it'll the sediment settles to the bottom. And those waffles are delicious and they're light because most people make waffles with oats. But we don't serve oats at our health center. Yes? How much is one cup? Because we use this Two, it's a 250 mil, yeah, so do we. And you make this into a cake? How do, you do that? How do I make that into a cake? I put a waffle down, I put a fruit jam, I put a pear cream, I'll give you the recipe for the pear cream, and then I slice strawberries and kiwi fruit, then I put another waffle on. I do the same thing, and then I put another waffle on. And maybe four waffles high and at the top you let the jam drip down and the pear cream and then you put it in the fridge for a few hours and it sets. If you make it and then serve it, the waffles go like that. And then you cut these magnificent slabs and it's all sugar free and it's delicious. So what's the pear cream? This pear cream is a delicious cream and you can use it on all desserts. And it's one cup of Brazil nuts or you might use cashews. So it's one cup of nut 
and one tin of pears with <coughs> juice. So we get the pears in natural juice. You buy tinned pears here? Yeah, it's only with sugar, I think. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, in Australia, nearly all pears are made in natural juice. Well, the only other thing you could do is buy the pears and cook them yourself. You use raw pears and it goes brown. It's not a, it starts to deteriorate. So what you're looking at probably is, um, I think our tins come 500 mil. You blend very well and you get this beautiful white cream that's slightly sweet because of the pears. And if you want to make it a little stiffer, put a bit of coconut cream in and put it in the fridge and it'll go a little stiffer. Oh, and you put vanilla, vanilla essence. I guess because Australia grows a lot of fruit, I don't know. But in every supermarket you can buy tinned pears in natural juice. How do you make it the jam? So how, how you can make the jam, um, see if you had blueberries, your wild blueberries, you heat them up and when they're just heated up, you, th you know, in a little water, then you thicken it with arrowroot and, and depending on if they're sweet or not, you could put a little maple syrup or a little honey in and that's, it's, oh, I guess that's like a berry sauce then, isn't it? So you could use a berry sauce. But how I used to make jam when the children were little, you can buy big um, bottles of black currant and apple juice with no added sugar. And then I'd buy dried black currants. And I'd put the apple and black currant juice in a saucepan. I'd put a whole packet of dried currants in. And I'd bring it to the boil and add a bit of arrowroot. And that was the jam I used to make the children. And put that into jars. They're not jams like your sugar jams, they're going to last forever. You mentioned muffins, but you didn't tell how old you did. No, because I actually never make them. <laughs> but you, you know, the banana cake recipe, it could be similar to that. Notice with the banana cake recipe, there was no milk or no water in it, because I find that makes a heavy cake. But if you just do bananas and the oils, it's a much lighter cake. Yes? Um, sometimes when you have, eat vegetables as a main course and then should have a dessert, uh, you should try to avoid uh, mixed vegetables and some fruit in the same meal. So I find that a, a difficult issue to solve sometimes. That's right. So mm -hmm. how, how do you think about so that let, let, let me tell you how we solve it. Mm -hmm. We don't, as a rule, serve fruit and vegetables together. But sometimes we'll have a main meal and then we'll serve an apple pie. And that is a little different to a raw apple, having a raw apple after a vegetable meal because the cooking does break it down somewhat. So you haven't got quite the problem. And the amount of time we have dessert, we don't even have it every week. I did say that we serve dessert once a week with the guests, but we don't do programs every week. So a dessert is something that you might do for a birthday or special occasion, but it's not a common thing. And remember, it's not the odd day you do it <laughs> or the odd day you don't. It's what, hap what you do every day. And it's really just a small piece, <laughs> so we don't we don't see that's a problem. The digestion difference. The fruit is five hours and vegetables is six hours, so that's why it's spoiled. 
Well, it's it's actually not. Your food digests in four and a half hours. Four to four and a half hours. And tomorrow when we go through our gastrointestinal tract, I'll be explaining this. And then it likes a one hour rest, so that's why five hours between meals. Uh -huh. But it should be different. Well, your so fruit, so your fruit is... Because you have something that is not having the And the food. other is, try it and see. Okay. Try it and see. See how, how it sits. And melons is also on some... Well, yeah. Not. yeah, we don't usually serve melons. I think um, uh, Thomas Jackson, was it Thomas Jackson in America, he said, eat melons alone or leave melons alone. <laughs> that was his, his saying. So, you know, if someone wanted to eat melons, maybe that would be a nice light evening meal just to have yeah. some melons. Why do you not eat uh, oats or oats? We don't eat oats because they're high in lectins. Okay. And we do find that about 30% of our guests don't seem to handle them. So we like to serve food that we know everyone can eat so that you aren't doing special food for special people.